Hello, welcome back. So our lesson for 8.5 in unit, um, this is the rational expressions unit. Um, this is probably one of the most challenging lessons for kids because this is stemming from the idea of how do you add and subtract two fractions together. And if you remember back in fourth, fifth grade when you were adding and subtracting fractions, that was a way more complicated question than simply multiplying and dividing because when you add and subtract fractions, you need to have common denominators. They have to be out of the same whole, essentially. So you need to get common denominators, which is exciting. <laughs> it's even more exciting when we realize we're going to be working with polynomial denominators today. So the rule is, when you're adding and subtracting fractions together, the first thing you do is you look through your problem and you determine what your common denominator is going to be. And ideally, you want to come up with the least common denominator. So when I look at my denominators, I want to make sure that, um, number one, that they're not factorable. And if they happen to be the same thing, then our work is done as far as common denominators go. The common denominator for this question is going to be 3x. So since we already have our common denominators, we can just simply add the numerator components to our fraction together. Uh, 4 plus 5 gives us a 9. Now, this problem, the fun is not done because I notice we have monomial pieces, and we can break apart uh, monomial into its pieces. In other words, we can reduce. So 9 over 3 is really a 3 over a 1. So 3 over 1x is going to reduce to 3 over x. All right, this next question, I look at my denominators and I see an x plus 3 and I see another x plus 3. So that tells me my common denominator is the x plus 3. And just like in our last lesson, I like to put polynomial factors in their parentheses. That way I know not to cancel unless I see a twin set. So here, since we have common denominators, I'm going to look at the numerators, push them into one fraction. And this is a 2x minus 4. And technically this is a great answer. This is fine, um, but I noticed the numerator there. There's a common 2 that I could factor out, and I want to make this last-ditch effort to factor out everything because sometimes there's a hidden common factor where they'll cancel at the last minute. This doesn't happen to be one of those questions, though. So this is a good answer as well. So as far as which answer is better, I don't really have an answer for you other than I know when I'm grading them. I like to see that you've attempted to factor everything, and that, well, that way I can see that nothing did cancel, but you, know, you gave it a go. This next question is a little challenging because this denominator and this denominator are almost the same. If only I could switch the signs here. So the trick we have for switching signs is to factor out a negative from our polynomial. This would make this a negative 9 and a plus x squared. So the denominator is now um, x squared minus 9. But this negative sign is going to kind of join up with the plus sign up here, and now it's become a subtraction problem. Now this problem is actually really challenging because... Um, the subtraction right here is going to be distributed to this entire fraction, the 2 and the negative x. So this becomes a minus 2, but then remember this is a minus, so negative negative x will be a plus x. So there's my entire numerator, and then our common denominator is x squared minus 9, but it does factor into um, x plus 3 times x minus 3. I'm going to go ahead and write it in factored form. I almost wish this problem wasn't the third one on the notes. Sorry, guys. All right, so now let's clean up this numerator. Uh, combining our like terms, I have a 3x plus 9 over x plus 3 times x minus 3. And y'all are new to this, so you probably think we're done, but we're not. That red numerator that I just wrote down is factorable. There's a common 3 that you can take out. So this becomes 3 times x plus 3. Mm. Good thing we factored, because there's some cancellation here at the last minute. See the twin factors of x, uh, yeah, x plus 3? So this x plus 3 is going to cancel with that x plus 3. Final answer, thank goodness we factored 3 over x minus 3. That was a super challenging question. <laughs> um, that would probably not show up on, on this next summative, so don't panic. But that, that would be a good SAT question. All right, this next one. I see an x minus 5, and I see an x plus 2. Neither one of them are factorable, and they're two separate factors. So when I go to come up with my common denominator, the common denominator for this question is going to need an x minus 5, and it's going to need an x plus 2. And I'm going to leave my denominator in factored form, because there's no point in just foiling it back out together. So this fraction, if you think about how to get common denominators, you would multiply the numerator and denominator by whatever term you're missing. And then same thing over here. You're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by whatever term you're missing. So I want this denominator, and I think about what we're missing. This guy is missing the x plus 2. And this guy is missing the x minus 5. 
So as far as denominators go, I don't have to do any work. I already have the common denominator, but this numerator is a hot mess. we got to clean this up. All right, so we have a 2x times the x plus 2, which we're going to distribute. If you don't want to write this stuff down, that's fine. And then we have a negative 4, or subtract 4, times an x minus 5. And now we do need to clean up this numerator. So let's distribute my negative 4 over here. So this numerator becomes a 2x squared plus 4x minus 4x, that's convenient, plus 20 over x minus 5 times x plus 2. So that numerator um, has some like terms. The 4x's are going to cancel. That's nice. And then I have 2x squared plus 20, which is actually fine for a final numerator. But if you notice, a good habit here is to factor at the end, just in case there's a common 2 we could take out. Um, we're still going to be left with x squared plus 10, though, which does not factor nicely. So this is the final answer that I would like to see on everyone's paper numerator in factored form, so I attempted to factor and cancel, you just nothing worked out. And then our denominator hasn't changed this whole time, it's x minus 5 times an x plus 2. So, good answer. Um, technically 2x squared plus 20 is a good answer for your numerator as well. Okay, this one's a little challenging because we have a monomial denominator, which means we can think of it in terms of pieces when I go to get common denominators. Now this denominator um, 4x squared minus 2x, there's a common 2x we could take out of that. So if you take out a 2x, you now have a 2x minus 1. That's the new denominator here. So I'm going to go to come up with a common denominator. I notice I have a 2x minus 1. That's an easy one to come up with. But then I have the 6x squared and a 2x. So um, those are monomial pieces. So I have to think about the least common denominator between a 6x squared and a 2x. Well, a 6 would take care of a 6 and a 2. And then if I had x squareds, that would take care of both the x squared and the x term. That would be common to them. So that's going to be my goal for common denominators. This fraction already has the 6x squared, but he is missing the 2x minus 1. And remember, we already set up the denominator, but I think it's a good habit for you guys to go ahead and write them in the numerator and denominator. Now this denominator is a bit of a challenge. It has the 2x minus 1, um, has the 2, has the x, but I need this 2x to look like this. So I still need to multiply by a 3 and another x. So that's what I'm going to multiply it, numerator and denominator over here by. Um, degree mode. So this numerator is now a mess, <laughs> but let's look at what happens. When I distribute, and I can backwards distribute this 5, I get a 10x minus 5, and then here x times 3x is plus 3x squared. All right, so um, that blue numerator, it's not in standard form order, so I'm just going to rewrite it real quick. And then... Ooh, it might be factorable, but here's where my lazy brain's kicking in. The only reason I would have to factor it is if it was going to cancel with either a part of the 6x squared or 2x minus 1. Now, 2x minus 1 is not going to be a factor of this polynomial because it's a 3x and a 1x at the beginning. So, scrap that for factoring. And there's no common monomial pieces here that I can factor out. So, I'm not really going to spend any time trying to factor the numerator, even if it did factor out. Frankly, I don't care. Actually, I don't think it does factor, so good news all around. All right, number six. Uh-oh, we got lots of factoring here. So this denominator factors into x plus 2 times another x plus 2. And then this denominator factors into x plus 2 times x minus 2. This question always tricks kids up because they think about what their common denominator would be. And you have to give me a listing of everything you see that shows up in any particular fraction. So we see an x plus 2. We see an x minus 2, but that first fraction needs double the x plus 2s as far as factors go. So you need another x plus 2 in your common denominator. So this fraction is missing the x minus 2. And then this fraction is missing the extra x plus 2. And that's how we're going to build up this common denominator. So, man, these questions are 
loaded with this fun. <laughs> this x minus 2 being multiplied by x plus 1. That's going to be a foiling question. So x times x is x squared. And then we have um, plus x minus 2x. And then minus 2. And then this negative 2 being distributed to x plus 2. Be careful because it's a negative 2 being thrown in here. So that's negative 2x minus 4. So right now that numerator looks like a hot mess, but if we collect all of our like terms here, let's see, we have x squared um, minus 4 plus 1, so minus 3x minus 6, which again looks like a factorable quadratic, but if I think about it a little longer, how they get factors. Now as far as your denominator goes, I don't mind if you write it exactly like that, but you know, save yourself a little space. You can say x plus 2 quantity squared, that indicates there's two of them, and then x minus 2. That's a great answer right there. All right, number 7. Um, x squared minus 9. This denominator is not factored yet, so let's rewrite it as x plus 3 times x minus 3. And then we have an x plus 3, or sorry, x minus 3, sorry. So for my common denominator, if I start making a list of what I need, I need an x plus 3, and I need an x minus 3. So this fraction over here is missing the x plus 3. Alright, so my numerator, hold on, <laughs> took my parentheses with me. I don't know what's happening. There we go. So that numerator becomes, where are we at? 6x plus 1, didn't get multiplied by anything. Come on, pen. There we go. Or not. 6x plus 1 plus. plus 1, and then 4 times x plus 3 becomes <sighs> plus 4x plus 12. So cleaning up that numerator, you have um, 10x plus 13, which does not factor over that common denominator of x plus 3 times x minus 3. Apparently the pen's not working. Uh, <laughs> so, there we go. Goodness, bad omen for the day. There we go, there's our final answer. All right, the next set of questions, I think we can all agree that the most challenging part of these questions is getting our common denominator. And once you can figure out what that common denominator is and kind of building up and not making any algebraic mistakes after that is key. So this denominator is in polynomial form and I really need it in factored form. So let's take out the common a and that's really an a times a minus 2. So now I can see the two pieces to that denominator. And then this denominator is an a plus 2 times an a minus 2. So in order to build up my common denominator I need an a and then I need an a minus 2 which is just common to both the denominators, so I don't need two of them. And then I need an a plus 2 as well. So this fraction is missing the a plus 2. And then this fraction is missing just the a. So denominators already built up. Let's talk about this numerator. I have 10 times, I can't read my writing, a plus 2, so that's 10a plus 20. And then there's a subtract 5 times a, so minus 5a. So let's clean up that numerator that is now a 5a plus 20 over and a times a minus 2 times a plus 2, any order. And technically that numerator factors pretty easily. There's a common 5 you could take out, but that's still going to leave you with an a plus 4, which isn't going to cancel with anything in the denominator, so I would be happy with any of these answers that we just wrote down. 
Well, this one or this one, but of course this one shows me that you know that you're supposed to factor at the end just to watch out for a common factor that might cancel. All right, nine's fun. We got some common denominator work to do here because this denominator, if I look at the factor pieces, it's x minus 4 times x plus 1. And then this denominator is an x minus 2 times an x plus 1. So they do have some common components. That's nice. So when I go to make my listing of all the things I need, I need an x minus 4, I need an x plus 1, and I also need an x minus 2. So this fraction is missing the x minus 2. And then this fraction is missing the x minus 4. And I know it's tempting, you don't want to write down that denominator work, because you know what the common denominator is, but for the sake of like mathematical properness, um, you want to make sure that you do hit numerator and denominator by that common missing term. So your numerator I'm going to write this one out the long way. We have 5 times x minus 2, and then we have a subtract 3 that's being multiplied by an x minus 4. So let's go ahead and distribute and clean up this numerator. And this becomes, let's see, 5x minus 10 minus 3x plus 12 over all this mess, x minus 4 times x plus 1 times x minus 2. Now back at this step here, there's a lot of kids who try to like cross off the x minus 2s and the x minus 4s. That would be undoing all the work you just did to build the common denominator. So make sure that you're not canceling anything until the very, very, very end of the problem. So your numerator, let's see, that's a 2x plus 2. Oh, that's a good problem. We're not done. All right, I'm running out of room. I'm just going to do this. That's a bad thing to do, though. Don't do that on your homework. Um, I need to move my camera out of the way. That numerator factors. You take a 2 out. So that's really 2 times x plus 1 over this common denominator. And I'm so happy we remembered to factor because look what's going to happen. Um, oops, I reversed the order, but who cares? The x plus 1s are going to cancel. And I wouldn't know that unless I thought to factor at the end. So now at the very end of my problem, I have common factors I can go, and I have just a numerator of 2 and a denominator of x minus 4 over x minus 2. There we go. Got it. Now the rest of this lesson, we have what are called complex fractions. Um, I don't think we're going to be teaching that component to the lesson during class, but remember how sometimes we offer upgrade retakes? That might be one of the things that we offer as an upgrade retake and getting ready for pre-calc and college algebra for my students who are moving on next year. All right, so we're going to finish the lesson here. We're going to work really hard on getting common denominators, and we're going to work extra hard at not making tiny arithmetic mistakes because they will kill us in these problems.